Now, I believe we are here for a reason. The Lord has ordained this gathering. This, what you're seeing here, I'm going to remind you of some things that was said, but it's different from last year. This, it was supposed to be different from last year. This is more strategic. Last year was, you know, when we did the 22 uh, regions, we came through here. And uh, uh, this was probably, Dutch said it was his favorite gathering that we did. Let's thank God for the 13 colonies. The Spirit of God was so strong, and it's so strong here tonight. But he's here for a different reason tonight. We're in, we're in a different time. We're in a different uh, way. He's got things to say to us to direct us out of here. The topic that we're in, the rebuilding of the altar, is the right topic for now. Uh, I am finishing a book while I'm here, actually. I sent two chapters after I got off the plane and got here uh, on a rebuilding, uh, uh, rebuilding the fire on the altar. And uh, it's a book that Alamu Biftu and I are writing together because it's such an important uh, understanding that we have to have for now is the altar of God and what it really is and what it looks like and how it's not a religious structure. It's, it's us uh, being uh, stone upon stone. And so uh, yet we'll do prophetic acts and it will be wonderful because we have entered this new era. Now, one of the things Bobby was saying, Aaron, as you help me move forward, is we're moving from a season of wisdom, Ephesians chapter 1, into a new season of revelation. So I want you to do something. I want you to put your hand on somebody and decree over them that the spirit of revelation is stirring in them. And with that, the Lord is bringing us to a place where we're going to stand new and fresh. Uh, uh, he's, he's making us able to stand. Yes, I know that we're in a critical state worldwide, but this is not a surprise to God. Matter of fact, uh, if you'll look at some of what uh, the Lord showed me starting in 1986 with China, you'll understand it a little better. These are key times. And here's what I want you to say out loud. We are in a rehearsal. Because we are moving into different times with different types of warfare and different types of understanding. So because of that, we're going to have to stay under the shadow of his wing. Therefore, he will shield us and pestilence won't be able to come to our door. And yet, when you get over to Ephesians 6, you find that we are in a place where we, when we have a hard time standing, we have to stand. And he says, I want you to be able to withstand all the wiles of the enemy. Well, that word withstand is the same word as antihistamine. That means you're going to have to build some resistance so you're not going to get knocked over every time something comes through the air that's not conducive to you breathing. And uh, that's from a person who grew up. Now, I will tell you this. I grew up allergic to everything. And then if some of you will remember in 2001, that came back against my body, and I would have anaphylactic shock, uh, shock of anything that went in my body. And it was the Lord reminding me, you're going to have to get to a place of being able to stand even when you don't want to stand. And so it becomes important that we understand the time we're living in, but it also uh, comes important that we, becomes very important that we understand the place. And that's what brings us to the 13 original colonies. There's a reason the Lord has focused on this part of America, because he's returning now to this part to use it as a place for his glory shift. Everybody say glory shift. Because, see, we're coming into this time where we are going to wear a new glory. We're going to be actually seen with a new glory on. Uh, I know this year I've been going through a great transition of my own because, as Bobby was saying, we just finished the eight years that I would not have thought this would have been my assignment, but God knew better of building that uh, apostolic center that is there in Corinth. And how he led us every step of the way. 
but the trials, the war of it, and then the breakthrough of it in the end of December was just amazing. And so at the end of that, the, you know, eight means new beginning. You are ready for a new beginning, but you've just gotten established enough to begin to start with. And yet, you're ready to go in to a new beginning. So when Cindy Jacobs came in January, she gave me a, a word and said uh, that God had called me to a three-month sabbatical. Well, you know, I've never been able to stop three months in my whole life doing anything. So I, I took it before the Lord, and I said, Lord, what are you saying to me? He said, I'm going to show you how not to press in warfare for three months. Then I'm going to ready you on how to win the war in the next nine months. Now, I want you to write that down because really I believe it is a blueprint for where, we've he where we're heading. And this meeting becomes a key milestone or memorial of where we are heading in this nation over the next, uh, I would have to say, nine months. And so it becomes very, very important. And that's why you want to hear the Word of God. You want to get the Word of God down in you. The demonstration you just experienced becomes important because, see, we have shifted out of last era's church structure. We're no longer in it anymore. Therefore, we're, we're not sure of what the building that we're in really looks like. We know we're in a building, and I'm not talking about four walls. Uh, but we know also that building structure is being solidified to withstand the gates of hell. And so that becomes important. I, 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 I'm amazed when I hear the word coming out. Because, see, in kingdom, there's a culture and there's a language. And a lot of times the world will say things to you like, well, you know, I don't understand what you're talking about. Paul says they won't understand what we're talking about because they're not supposed to understand how we're communicating because God's having us communicate in a way that when they're ready to hear the good news, they'll hear it. But when we're ready to overthrow Satan's schemes, we'll overthrow Satan's schemes too. So you're going to have to learn how to communicate in a new way as we enter this new season. And you're going to have to learn the culture of the kingdom. It's just like going to another nation. You have a different culture in another nation. Now, I've been uh, upward of 160 nations, and therefore there's many cultures out there, many people out there. And you have to go in knowing that you're going to have to some way communicate in the midst of their culture. You're, you can't run in and speak English in, uh, a, in, in a Swahili uh, uh, government structure. You've got to learn how am I going to communicate so that I get through to their culture in a way. Now, let me go over this one more time because it becomes important. You were the formation of this nation. And when God started forming you by drawing people here to this land, he started communicating and building on, in these 13 colonies what he wanted to be the communication center of this entire nation. And that which would change the world. That's why the people, now I want you to think back. In every one of these states, in every one of these colonies, they had this communication line that heaven was coming down to impart to them what heaven was saying that would cause this turtle island, so to speak, to really be what it was supposed to be. And in that, he had a kingdom plan from the beginning. Now, shift from the 15, 1600s to now. See, God's not in time. He, he, it doesn't bother him that we're in 2020 because he already saw us in 2020 before we got here. And he wanted to continue on 
what he started in the communication to the first person in this land. And that first person wasn't necessarily someone who came from England. And I think that's a fallacy we have. Well, sometimes we think, you know, well, the Christians came from England and therefore they've got this English mentality that was brought into this land, our Dutch mentality. That's not necessarily so because he had been communicating and establishing himself with a people that he had placed here that would continue on. Now, his goal was to do this, to perpetually build what he wanted built so that the kingdom of God would advance in this land without stopping. Therefore, he wanted what he was building in one generation to continue on with another generation and come into a greater plan of fullness. And then a greater plan of fullness. And a greater plan of fullness. He wanted us to learn how to integrate who we were And why he had brought us here because he predetermines our times and our place. And for this nation to become what it had to become now, you can go back over 400 years and he had to bring people in here to make it what it should be now. See, I I think sometimes we get skewed in the way that we see things because we're coming in from a dominating standpoint instead of a submissive standpoint to God. In other words, we couldn't be the nation we are now had he not used all of the terror of that slave structure. Now he's ready to bring that after 400 years into a liberty of rulership in this new season. See... Same in every area that we're part of. And so now we're at a place where it's almost like what he was saying through Cheryl's tongue, and I I didn't really understand it until John got up here. I'm ready. Believe it or not, I can hear God through John very easily. (laughs) He doesn't ever say too much. He doesn't say it too intellectually. He just says it. He says, now I'm ready to restart what I had planned. And I don't think we're to be real heady in all this. I think we're to say, all right, Lord, the glory shift has begun. Say it out loud. And he wouldn't be able to restart if he didn't come back to the original route to restart it. And that's why he's had to amass in meetings like this all up and down this coast, a remnant that he would use to advance the kingdom of God today. And so in doing that, it becomes important. Now, yes, I could go into all sorts of things that's going to happen, especially in these next six years. Because remember, God showed me through 2026. We had people at the church that told me the Lord was coming back in 2008. And I said, I hope he does. But he's going to leave me here to 2026. <laughs> and I'm sure they thought, well, yeah, I can see that. But, but it's because he had showed me through into this decade, beginning the importance of 2020. He showed me that in 1986. Then adding to that, now this is what I want to get to. Adding to that, when we had that meeting here at, at Liberty Park, when he caught me up, he then showed me into the third year of a new political administration. In other words, uh, on the 50-state tour, I had prophesied that our next president would be uh, uh, African-American. I mean, prophets don't just get who they want. We don't, I mean, you know, I'm not sure I've ever really liked any of those people. You know, they're not all, they're not real likable people. And I've known several of those, of of our leaders. They're, they're focused, they're devoted, and God has reasons he puts them in. 
He has reasons he lets iniquity mount up. But then all of a sudden, he said in New Jersey on May 31st, 2008, I said, how will you change America? And he said, it must learn to play the trump card. I'm not sure we've ever learned to play the trump card yet. And then somebody said, would he have two terms? And I said, I was asked by Charisma that. I said, the Lord showed me in the third year there will be an attempt to impeach him. But he's spoken to me. Now, what I want to say to you is, we are in the greatest shift that we have ever been in. And I'm going to come back to where I'm leaving you right now. Because you, some way, there is a portal up here to hear what he is saying to an entire nation. Put your hand on somebody and say, you are more important than you know. <laughs> Every time we gather here, all of a sudden there's this portal that starts stirring to change an entire nation. Now, so we come to now, right now. We're in a new era. Everybody say era. era. That's a historical moment. Go ahead, Aaron. That's a historical moment. And what this year is about is how we speak. That's why the demonstration that was brought to you here is a necessary demonstration. If we don't learn how to speak, by the revealed word of God, we will not change the course of history in days ahead. Now, that's a different way of saying it. And with that, this, this environment that we're in, this era we're in, is a supernatural, mystical dimension. It's got, in, it's got spirits. For instance, earlier tonight, I, I don't always see this, there was an angel standing right past you on that side there and saying, I am ready to open the door. We are in a supernatural, mystical dimension. You have no choice. This is God's dimension. You cannot stay in your, in your uh, concrete type of thinking. We've got to expand the way we're seeing, the way we're hearing the way we're moving, the way we're entering into what God is doing. And it is a very, very tense time, and it is based on authority and rule. Us coming here tonight is establishing a new authority and a new rule throughout this entire nation. Just by us being here. And it didn't take me, just me being here. Are the prices, are the Roselle, it took every one of us in this room being here aligned. And then we had to have the sound to come down to do this because we have entered a time to determine a new rule. And that's what we're here for tonight and tomorrow. When you go to bed tonight, you start listening for the new rule and new authority. When I say rule, I mean measure. He's recalibrating a new measurement in this land. He's doing it tonight. He has brought us here to do it. And this season of tension is tremendous. Leadership tensions are going on. I mean, it's amazing. Tension is where you're, you're, you're pulling two different ends of the same structure, and, they, and something's got to give. Say it out loud. Something's got to give. See, by... And, and I gave this word in January. I said, in, by April, we have already been through a crisis. I had no idea that we would be in a crisis. When we got off the plane today, it had a big sign there, in case of a lockdown, what to do in the airport. And I turned around and I said, I am so glad James came. He can sing us out of, sing us out of here. See, we're in a different world, a different season that we're in. We're in we're political tensions. I had not... Uh, see, I was raised and, uh, by a godly grandmother in a very tense, tense situation of home. And uh, I was raised to be right. 
and to act right. I'm sort of like you. We, I, I had not seen, I was researching something because I'm fin- I was finishing this book while I was up here. And all of a sudden, President Trump came on. He's finishing his State of the Union speech, which I was traveling somewhere and didn't watch it. And there, Nancy, uh, Miss Pelosi stands up and rips all that apart. My grandmother would have beat the hell out of me for doing that. <laughs> I mean, that's just how simple that is. You, you, you don't do things like that without bringing a curse down. She would, have take, she would have made me eat it in front of the whole nation. That's, that's what we're missing from East Texas. I mean, that's all I could think about when you were up here speaking. She would have said, you're going to eat this. I'm going to beat the tar out of you till you go out in front of this whole nation and apologize for acting like that. And listen to me. I had enough fear of that woman to know that she would do that. That's what it is. We have no fear of God. And, and, the Lord, and I don't usually even talk like this, but... I saw it today, and I said, oh, my Lord, what is wrong with us? No wonder we're under curses. No wonder we've got viruses trying to come under our doorstep. It's crazy. We're in provisional tensions. We're in supernatural atmospheric tensions. Here's the spiritual end of things. We're we're in one new man tensions. There comes a point where God says, you will be one. You will be one. I will not have black and white. I will not have male and female. I will have a people who represent the anointing, and the only way you're going to get it is to be one new man. And I'm going to tell you, he's he's working it out of us. Look at somebody and just tell them, right? Tell them he's just working things out of you. And my, I, I learned this from my grandmother. You will not look at anybody. Whoever has the greatest anointing, that's who you're going to submit to. I don't care what they look like. I don't care what sex they are. That's who you submit to if you learn to submit to the anointing of God and the presence and power of God that is in your midst. That's why I love to see women in ministry. I love to see other uh, 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 more people that have been dominated rise back up with their voice again. It's amazing to see it. Now, let me get to this place because I want to leave you with something. Angels of war are being assigned. Now, I know that's what I saw right over here. That angel of war was standing right there saying, I'm ready to open the door for this people. Now, and so we're seeing something here that is so important. We're seeing, we're seeing this roar from heaven come in. I like to show this picture because it really is what it looks like. See, heaven is shifting. Heaven is shifting. It's not just the earth is shifting. The, uh, Psalms 102 said, he removes the heavens like an old garment. He is blowing away old structures that once were and once were important, but he's blowing them away now with this wind. Those uh, hawks, all that represents, it, that is one of the most prophetic things. You need to get that and show that everywhere you go. That is a, in 1998, uh, John Eckhart preached a message that I never forgot on the hawk as an apostolic symbol. And when you see them starting to move, it means they are setting new boundaries for war. Now, it is so important that we see that God is sending signs in now in this supernatural season saying the heavens are changing. The heavens are changing. Get ready. You're going to ride the winds of this heaven because this this 
pay this 80 means the wind is blowing in. It means the sound is blowing in. It means your mouth is opening up. It means you are coming face to face with that which is blowing in from heaven and all of a sudden you are becoming the roar for the future. Put your hand on some here first. Then impart it to somebody else. You are becoming the roar for the future. There's a sound in God's people. Without this roar, there is no movement. Keep standing. Go ahead, Aaron. And it's because the original colonies are the battlefield for America. Without your roar, a nation can't change. You have the authority to turn over what comes out of Maine that shouldn't be coming out of Maine or Vermont that shouldn't be coming out of Vermont. And I'm not talking about politically. Look at what you look like now. There you are aligned. And it is amazing what God has done. Now I want us to do something. If you're from Georgia, let out a roar. Georgia is in the house. Let's roar with them. Now, all of a sudden, when, when James was singing, and we were talking, and we were singing about the name of God, the Lord said, Macon, Georgia will have revival. I don't know, I don't even know where Macon, Georgia is, but the Lord says, you go there and say, revival has been turned on in this place. <laughs> South Carolina is in the house. Somebody roar. Now let's roar with South Carolina. See, this is why God brought us here. There is a remnant move of God in every state. North Carolina is in the house. Let's hear you. Let's roar with them. All of a sudden, there's a magnification. Virginia is in the house. Wow. Let's roar with them. I saw Maryland when I walked in. Let's hear Maryland roar. Let's roar with them. Pennsylvania. We're all going to roar with Pennsylvania, but we're going to bend down and we're going to look like we're looking down deep into the ground and we're going to say to that root in Pennsylvania, come alive, roar into the ground. New York is somewhere in this house. Let's roar with them. Connecticut is somewhere in this house. Roar with them. God showed me in 1972 revival in Connecticut. I decree right now the wind of revival is going to surprise Connecticut. New Hampshire is somewhere in here. All right, roar with them. Vermont is here. Roar with Vermont. Maine is here. Roar with Maine. Not yet, not yet. We're going to deal with the smallest. Is Rhode Island here? Roar with Rhode Island. Now, I want to deal with the first, and we say God is about to do something in the first. Delaware. Let's roar with Delaware. Delaware. 
Now, when I flew in today, the Lord said, my eye is on Massachusetts. Let Massachusetts roar, and then let's roar with them. Roar with them. Now, and the Lord says Massachusetts will become a change agent in this land. Now, I want to do something with New York. Just raise your hand for a minute. And you see New York? New York is going to have to mount up a strength of sound to push into New York City. I decree right now a new move of God all through New York <laughs> with a strength of sound, new types of gathering, and Lord, I say it will go in and the voice of God will be stronger in New York City than the voice of the enemy. Let's decree that. There is a portal over New Jersey. If you're from New Jersey, give a shout. When God showed me New Jersey from heaven, it had a valid root system that was important for awakening in this nation. But it was, had corruption. It was like leeches were hanging on it. Decree right now the leeches are coming off of New Jersey. Now, bl now bless somebody and say, we've got a sound. Now, now, you may be seated for a moment, except Nova Scotia. Where's Nova Scotia? There they are. Uh, God has you here because there's something in your history that can affect the change of this nation, especially in Massachusetts. And the Lord says to you, I brought you here because I'm going to start moving from Nova Scotia in a new way. I'm going to start moving again in Nova Scotia. And this time you will affect an entire continent, saith the Lord. The Lord says you won't back away. You'll say I'm re we're ready to cause French to change, to cause uh, 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 the first people of the lands to change. We're ready for this move of God. The Lord says there will be a voice coming from Nova Scotia that will touch Canada, change Massachusetts, and then come into America and stir it up from one end to the other. Now, let me give you these, and then I, I just want to end with one thing for tonight, because tomorrow we'll get in detail. There's several things we have to do when we're talking about rebuilding an altar. Go ahead, Aaron, and let's look at it. See, this is what he said from New Jersey in 2008. This would have been last year. He's, when he showed me that impeachment thing against our president, he said, I'm not ready for that. So he took me to the scripture in Luke, and he said, because uh, the owner came in and said, let's pull it up. And, uh, and the parable says, no, we're going to dig around it. We're going to fertilize it. Then if it doesn't start producing, we'll then pull it up. Now, beginning in April... We need to see great change in this nation. Now, because God said that in New Jersey, there's something from this gathering and anointing that when you decree a thing, as Bobby said from uh, the book of Job, it says he begins to establish it and cause light to come on your path. That says there's some assignment here beginning in April that will create a new move of God in this land and save a nation. I don't think this is about our president. 
I think this is about a nation coming alive again, coming alive and producing fruit again. And so it becomes very intense. Now, this is what I want to leave, leave us with. See, here's several things we have to do. We have to know our field and sphere to establish a new rule. We have to mobilize armies. You're doing that. You have to strategically know where the spirit has come down because you have the ability to pull. That's where a past altar has been, and you're able to refire that altar but cause the fire from the altar to go out to new altars. You've got to see the high places. I, I'm not sure. I think you've done lots of research and spiritual mapping, but the Lord says now the sound must come in that causes those high places to begin to fall. And then you have to say, Lord, we've got to see some cleansing and purifying in this land. I, we've got to see it in our own life. But here comes the real key, new glory altars. Say new glory altars. So here's what the, the year is really about. It's about a divine return. It's about us moving from where we've been forward into what we never fully experienced. And right now, that if we don't have this divine return in this land, from the colonies that were chosen to war for the freedom of the land, we'll never see the move of God that will change the course of the next two generations. And it becomes critical from April through September. It becomes critical. You become critical. Now, Turn with me to the book of Ezra. This is what I want to leave with you. So I said, Lord, there's so many patterns about divine return. And I couldn't hear him until I walked in here. And the Lord said, this is a people that will lead from captivity a nation out of captivity. I'm going to say it again. This will be a people that will lead from their captivity a nation out of captivity. So I went to Ezra. In other words, the colonies, you have gotten into a place where you're coming alive again. I remember when I first started coming up here in 1972, there was nothing. Just a church here or a church there. This is a movement in the original 13 colonies. Let's thank God for the movement you're part of. And so... He took me to Ezra because there comes a moment where God says, it's time for you to get out of the captivity you've been in. I know what has happened over the last 70 years, but we've now entered a new era called 80, and it's time for you to lead out and reveal a glory realm that has never been seen before. And so remember what happened was, when the people started praying and Daniel started interceding, there became this chain of reaction events where he moved on a political leader, Cyrus, and all of a sudden it was an ungodly political leader that said, it is time for you to return. It is time for you to move forward. It is time for you to get back to a new glory. That's where we are in this nation. We have had to come through political structures to where finally one is saying, you have got to move back. You have got to move in. Jerusalem has got to become the capital of Israel again. It was decreed in 1948, but the warfare was so strong they never established it. Now it's being established. And all hell is breaking out. Nations are having to realign. And so what the Lord does is say, it is time for you to worship, to return to a place of worship. Now, hear what I'm saying. See, we're hearing word tonight. We're, we've experienced worship, but return to a move of worship where all of a sudden, your place can be restored again.
Your place can be restored again. And when they did that, it became the seventh month where they pressed in. Now, what I want to say to you is this. I believe you are paving a way for a nation to change through September. God sent me to tell you that. You are that important this era. You are that important in the future of this nation. And so with that, they had to press through into a new place of worship. They had to come into a place of discipline to move forward. And then you get to chapter 8 and something happens. See, the altar had to be restored back to the place where it had left from and gone into captivity. God is doing a new thing to give us an awareness of this presence and worship that he's calling us to. And in it, he gets these people moving. He gets them going. And all of a sudden, it takes every one of these tribes to be in movement. One of the things that I want to assign to you tonight is to say, go back and call forth the multiplication of the remnant in your territory. Call it forth. Call it forth. Find it. Call it forth. It needs to multiply. It needs to grow. And Because you see, all of a sudden, God starts looking at the servants and the sons, and they get to a place, and this is where I want us to end. They get to a place of crossing over, and God stops them. See, I think we're at that same place at the river Ahava. And he stops them and he says, wait a minute. Let's look at who you are. Let's look at each one of you. I have sent for you from Georgia. I've sent for you from the Carolinas. I've sent from you here. Just like he did when he brought the freedom into this land. He's done it again. And all of a sudden, he said, you should come in here and really establish the house of God in a new way. Again, we're in a new era. We don't even know what the house looks like yet. Nor did they. And so, he gets them moving, and then here's my scripture. Then I proclaimed a fast there at the river of Ahava. 21, verse 8, chapter 8, verse 21. That they might humble themselves before our God. I don't know when we've all knelt before like we did. To seek him the right way for us. Now hear me. To seek him the right way for us and our little ones and all of our possessions. I'm appointing a place tonight at this crossing over time for you to stop for a moment. Let me choose the right sacrifice from you and fast from you. And because there's a right way that you go from tonight and bring a whole nation into the future. Now, I know it's here in in New England. I know it's here in the 13 original colonies. It's here. Because God coded it in this territory when he started forming the nation. For I was ashamed to request of the king an escort of soldiers. We're not going to run to the government and say, protect us. We're going to say... We've been assigned to go before a nation. Because the enemy is on the road. Now that's what I want to leave with you. There's an, let me reverse it. The enemy is on the road. Therefore, there's two generations at stake. Your provision and your incomes are at stake. The house of God 
is the only hope of bringing change. And in the midst of it, you're going to seek me for three days. And this is what I see doing it in the next, through September, I see state after state having three days of worship some way where they're worshiping and they're just worshiping. And they're calling forth the worshipers and they're calling forth the people and they're saying, Remnant, come and worship. Come and worship because the enemy is on the road. But if we come and worship, we'll see God's new plan for our nation. That's why I think we're here. And then it says this in the Word of God. I said, Lord, our iniquities are so much in this nation. How in the world could it change? And that's what I thought about today when I saw that replay. I thought, my Lord, our iniquities are so bad here. And they're just displayed with no gall. I mean. And in the midst of it, but then God said this. And now for a little while... Grace has been shown from the Lord our God to leave us a remnant to escape. That's you. Stand up. That's you. And yet, for a little while, a short window, I've chosen a people. I've chosen a remnant. I've chosen the original route, the original route, the original place. To bring a little enlightenment back to this land. And if they will worship from place to place to place. I will turn my face back on this nation. And reveal the enemy's plan. Let's give a